Dr. Filner, thank you for joining us again this afternoon. I think we're going to talk about carpal tunnel syndrome and how you treat it with the uh, new MicroLite Smart Laser. Thank you, Mike. Uh, the reason we want us to uh, include this in this uh, group of uh, discussions about uh, dental problems is that carpal tunnel is a very common problem with dentists and with their assistants. Uh, with the uh, repetitive uh, motions that they have to do as well as the uh, contortions they have to put their wrists through uh, to achieve their uh, objectives in terms of uh, doing dental work, uh, dental repairs and cleanings and things like that. So the uh, discussion about carpal tunnel is very appropriate. Uh, that was one of the, uh, or actually it was the uh, reason that the cold low power laser was originally approved by the FDA, uh, was the use of uh, the laser in uh, treating carpal tunnel uh, at General Motors. They achieved a phenomenal return to work, which is very difficult for people with repetitive stress problems on a, uh, an assembly line. Uh, and by changing their approach to using the uh, low power laser, they were able to achieve uh, an 80% return to work, which markedly reduced their disability and uh, medical costs. Uh, however, uh, we, we need to, to differentiate uh, the uh, carpal tunnel uh, problem in terms of whether or not the EMG or nerve conduction tests that are done to make the diagnosis are accurate or not. Sometimes they are not accurate and uh, also uh, you find that people who have symptoms similar to carpal tunnel uh, don't show the decrease in median nerve conduction that you would expect to see with carpal tunnel. So we have to sort of look at both kinds of problems. If, if the diagnosis is correct and you have true carpal tunnel at the wrist where there is a compression of the median nerve as it passes through the carpal tunnel. Uh, the original studies demonstrated and uh, in my experience works very well in placing the laser for, uh, in this case, when we would use the uh, smart laser uh, over three areas in the wrist. Uh, and I like to start uh, over the ulnar uh, portion of the carpal tunnel uh, and use it for the five cycles over the, uh, that part of the carpal tunnel. We then move to the middle part of it uh, as we're looking to decrease the inflammation across the entire carpal tunnel. And then uh, finally over the median nerve portion to reduce that uh, inflammatory problem. Not uncommonly, you also have to go down into the uh, thenar area to because the surgeons tell us that they often have to go there to release the carpal tunnel so that uh, there's often either an inflammatory component or an entrapment component by tight muscles in this area so that the thenar area needs to be examined and treated with the laser as well to get full treatment of the carpal tunnel one of the things to be aware of is that uh, it's not unusual for uh, the carpal tunnel to demonstrate slightly different clinical pictures uh, and we're not talking about someone who has started to get a full numb three fingers uh, thumb and the first and the second and third fingers or part of the third finger uh, or is dropping things what we sometimes see is patients will complain of numbness and tingling on the fingertips particularly of the thumb and the second third and fourth fingers uh, this is often a giveaway uh, that you're dealing with a median nerve problem. Additionally, uh, you have to look at the EMG to see if the person doing the EMG has checked at the elbow. Uh, lots of times now they do, but sometimes they don't. And if the nerve conduction is decreased at the elbow and not so much at the wrist, you're dealing with entrapment of the median nerve by the pronator teres muscle. And that's usually because of a trigger point in that muscle which can easily be treated with the low power laser. Uh, and I'm doing it through my clothing, but obviously you can never use it through the clothing. So that's if a patient has documented carpal tunnel. Uh, sometimes one treatment is enough to resolve the problem. Frequently you need several to do so. 
Now what we need to do is to think about these other cases where the symptoms are similar and they are often directly related to myofascial trigger points and the referred pattern uh, and sometimes entrapment. Uh, you can get any number of problems that refer down into the wrist uh, from the shoulder and the upper arm and particularly the infraspinatus muscle refers right into that area. A number of the uh, muscles in the forearm that have to do with extension and occasionally with flexors will also give you symptoms that are similar uh, to carpal tunnel. Uh, I might mention at this point that you don't always see simply pain as a referral pattern. You can see pain, hot, cold, numbness, tingling, itching, ticklishness, all of these can be evident in an area where the trigger point has referred uh, a <clears throat> symptom. So one needs to be very observant in terms of not only palpating all of the muscles which could be involved, but in treating all of these muscles if you find these trigger points. Well, Dr. Filner and I work with uh, General Motors uh, we would talk about double crush syndrome, which is I think what you're describing, meaning the pain is coming elsewhere into the hand and it's not necessarily corporal tunnel syndrome. That's exactly right. You can have any number of situations. You can have one of the things which also is very important is to look for the what's been uh, somewhat mislabeled as the thoracic outlet syndrome. Uh, surgeons tend to think this is due to extra ribs or a tight rib. 95% of them, in my experience, are due to problems with the pectoralis minor muscle. The entire brachial plexus, the vein coming from the arm and the artery going to the arm, all go right under the tendon of the pectoralis minor muscle. And you can do a simple test by lifting the arm while you're palpating the radial pulse. If once you pass roughly this uh, area with the uh, arm being elevated and the pulse markedly decreases or disappears, you know that the problem is here at the pectoralis minor muscle. Uh, if the pulse is not affected by that, you would think in terms of the scalene muscles entrapping the brachial plexus. And EMG people find it very difficult to diagnose a problem if the brachial plexus is involved. Uh, it can be very difficult to do that with simply an EMG. So you should always palpate all of these muscles around the shoulder, particularly the pectoralis minor muscle after doing the test uh, for circulation and uh, the uh, infraspinatus muscle, the teres minor muscle will refer into the palmar side of the hand. Uh, the subscapularis muscle can give you a numb hand and just by in, uh, treating the uh, trigger point, you can in fact completely eliminate the numbness. Well, Dr. Filner, uh, we're getting uh, towards the end of our visit here this afternoon. Uh, anything you'd like to uh, share, just kind of summarize with uh, our listeners that uh, will be watching this? Well, and... I think it's very important not to simply take a diagnosis that someone has presented you with as carpal tunnel. You need to reassure yourself that it is in fact a carpal tunnel based on evaluating the EMG uh, report that's given knowing the person who did the EMG uh, to make sure that they are accurate and then uh, not only treating that area to see it resolve uh, and it often resolves over a number of treatments uh, but looking for these other trigger points which can refer into this area and even if the problem is really one of carpal tunnel it can ameliorate it uh, significantly by decreasing the uh, referred pain from the other trigger points. And I, I would think we would both agree that uh, corporal tunnel surgery would be the last option, right doctor? Most <laughs> certainly should be the last option because surgery is final. Uh, you can get scar tissue not only on the skin surface but down deep that can give you uh, long lasting or even permanent problems. Uh, you can develop sympathetic or uh, the uh, uh, what was known as reflex sympathetic dystrophy after that kind of <clears throat> surgery. Any number of problems can occur that you can avoid by treating this with the low power laser, which is non-invasive, 
has no risk to speak of and has no pain whatsoever uh, involved in the treatment. Uh, as far as I know, there's no other medical treatment which can qualify uh, like that. The right. only difference between that and many other areas besides what I mentioned is the time that it takes to use the right. laser. Right. Uh, so you have to be able to spend the time with patients to make the diagnosis and provide the proper treatment. Well, Dr. Pilgrim, thank you so much for your time this evening and look forward to catching up with you again in the near future.